Howdy, if you're pre-cal, it's Miss Kosh. I am continuing Mr. Passwater's notes um, from 311. So we've done two pages of it, and now it's having us solve equations. Okay, so um, I haven't practiced this yet, so we'll see if I can get it right the first try. Um, okay, let f of x equal 4 cosecant x plus 3 and g of x equal 11. What are the coordinates of the points at the intersection of the graph for 0 to 2 pi? Okie dokie. Well, so let's set these things equal to each other. Well, okay. One of my options would be, what does this graph look like? And so cosecant would have an asymptote at 0 and an asymptote at pi and an asymptote at 2 pi. So here's 0, here's pi, here's 2 pi. The 4 is going to stretch everything. Um, so this one actually opens up, and then this one opens down. And then it shifts over. So everybody's going to stretch by a factor of 4 and then go up 3. So it, would, it went from 1 to stretch to 4, and now it goes up to... So this is the point 7. So this is the point pi over 2 comma 7. Then this one, okay, so then it stretches down to negative 4, and then it goes up 3 units. So this is going to be, so it's looking something like this. This is 3 pi over 2 comma negative 1. Okay, and so they want to know when does this equal 11? Well, okay, 11 is going to be bigger than 7. I don't know if it's drawn to scale, don't care a whole lot, but I'm going to get two answers that should live between 0 and pi. Okay, so that kind of gives me an idea. Did we have to do this? No, not necessarily, but anyway, here we go. Okay, so 4 cosecant of x plus 3 equals 11. I'm going to subtract 3, get 8, divide by 4, and get 2. So cosecant of x is equal to 2. You'll remember cosecant is sines, buddy, so the reciprocal of cosecant. So if it helps you, you can write this, and now if I take the reciprocal of both, or I can, you can think of I'm cross-multiplying um, and then dividing, but basically we get that sine of x is equal to 1 half, and now I think back to my unit circle, where does sine equal 1 half? Well, here and here. So this is pi over 6, and this is 5 pi over 6. So pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Does that make sense with my picture? I, I think it does. It looks like it's somewhere close to 0, somewhere close to pi, which is what we got right here. Um, and they told us to live between 0 and 2 pi, so we did. Okay, let's look at the next one. Um, on this one, oh, the, the negative 1 half, so, well, we have, um, I'm going to write it this way, negative 1 half secant of x plus 3 equals 4. Okay, so then if I graph this side, um, I have my secant graph normally starts here and then opens up, but now it's going to be reflected and open down. Um, and this point, so it's going to do something like this. And then, oh, I lied to you. What did I do wrong? Did you catch it? Um, instead of being at negative one half, it's now going to go up three. So, well, <laughs> what if I just change? I can pretend this is my midline. And I am now at, this is now the point zero comma, um, uh, two and a half. Okay, here's my new, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, now it messed with my head. Okay, so then the other one is going to be, it would have been at positive one half, but up three is going to get me to um, three and a half. Okay, so if this is, if this is zero, two and a half, then we need, I wrote in the wrong spot, we'll call this line y is equal to three, that's the new midline, and then we're, we have some point over here, well, I'm in a, and it's, this would be the point um, pi, three and a half. Is that right? Let's see, secant of pi, um, secant of pi is going to be negative 1 times negative 1 half is now positive 1 half plus 3, and yes, there we go. Okay, and so then we're going to be over here again by 2 pi. So this is 0, this is 1 pi, this is 2 pi. And we know we want to know when it equals 4. So I expect answers um, near, well, this is this is pi over 2. I'm kind of overcomplicating this, I'm sorry. And um, 3 pi over 2, so my answers better be between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, do I always draw this? No, anyway, sorry. Okay, negative 1 half secant x is equal to, subtract that to positive 1, multiply both sides by negative 2, secant of x is equal to negative 2. Secant's buddy is cosine, so this becomes cosine of x is equal to negative 1 half. Cosine on my unit circle is the x value. When is it negative 1 half? Here and here. So this is 2 pi over 3. 
and this is 4 pi over 3. What did we think it needed to be? We thought it needed to be between 3 pi over 2, which is here, and pi over 2. So th that does seem to match up to what we expect. So 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Okay, last problem, and they suggest we use a calculator. Can you read what I did? Not so much. Um, so I'm starting with the how I expect my kids to start with a cleared calculator. Um, okay, so menu. Let's go graph this. I see 3 minus 1.7 cotangent. Ah, okay. So with this, um, cotangent is 1 over tangent. There is not a, tan a cotangent button on the calculator. Um, and so then this becomes, in here we have a 0.5x minus 1. Okay, maybe I should have thought through this one a little bit ahead of time. Let's see what happens. Um, what do I expect this to look like? I expect, um, okay, so if I have y is equal to negative 1.7 cotangent of 0.5x minus 1 plus 3, I expect my my inflection point to move up 3. Um, I expect everything, let's rewrite this. This would be negative 1.7 cotangent. Um, I can factor out a 1 half, um, and so then this becomes minus 2 plus 3. I expect at the point, um, every, everything's going to shift over 2 and then up 3, and it's the everything has been stretched this way. And then instead of cotangent typically, cotangent typically decreases all the time, but because of this negative, it's now going to increase all the time. So it's going to look a little more like tangent. That's kind of, this is kind of an interesting problem. Let's see if I get what I expected. Um, so we can hit enter and draw that graph. Okay, let's set a window to something that seems reasonable. Um, a window. Um, it looked like the x values were probably okay, but the y values, I want to go... I need to go up three. Um, I need to be able to see that the fact that my inflection point changes at three. So let's go up a little higher, six. I don't know. Okay, and that does look like what we expected. So what did they say in the x plane? What are the x coordinates of the point where p of x equals two? Okay, so I didn't read the whole problem, but I can set this equal to two. Okay, the x coordinates of the point from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, you know what? Let's go back and change this window again. So um, let's go a tiny bit less than um, 0. So say negative pi over, oh, that's not a pi. Shift pi there, over 2. And then we wanted to go a little bit bigger than, so then I'll do 5 pi over 2. So I just went a little bit beyond the window that I wanted so I could see everything I wanted to do. Okay, so there's only one answer, G solve. Find that point of intersection. 4.07814 dot dot dot. Okay, so what are the x, what's the x coordinate x is about? 4.0781. Interesting. Um, or the other option on this calculator, you can do G solve, and then you can do, come over and do um, x cal. So it'll calculate the x value of this curve when the value, y value equals 2. But that wasn't always something easy for us to do, so I'm, I'm used to doing the intersection. All right, I hope that was helpful. Subscribe, come back and watch more videos. Go home and practice.